I'm going to make the case that, um, like I said, the, that Aisha was it. Aisha no, no, was no, 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 no. What, what I'm saying is, that yeah. if, just for argument's sake, I don't believe um, Muhammad was perfect. But for argument's sake, let's say he was perfect and infallible for making mistakes. Now, my issue with the Hadiths, and not necessarily with the Quran, uh, is that you have a situation where you have, say, like me and you in a room, and there's no third party. You may be, just say for argument's sake, I know trigger warning, please. You're Muhammad, yeah. Yeah, you're not. Yeah. Let's, assume, just, uh, let's, let's assume Muhammad is there, yeah. Yeah, yeah just say he's there, yeah. Muhammad, I'm, I'm Aisha is having a conversation yeah. Yeah. Yeah, with Muhammad. Yeah. Muhammad has tried, given her some revelation from God, which is amazing. Yeah. She is, do you agree that Aisha is, before we go in, is Aisha fallible to make mistakes? Yes. So what would Aisha can make yeah, mistakes. So yes. what would happen yeah, if when Aisha leaves the room, yeah, she goes to a third person, and then she says that the Prophet Muhammad says this, but she has made mistakes yes. uh, into inter interpretation. Yes. So the message originally may have been right, mm. yeah, but the interpretation as it goes to the third person becomes corrupted. That's a very that good point. That can go down a long chain of narration. Yes, that's a very good point you made. You see, and not just with Aisha. If Aisha, if Aisha was people. the only source of Islam. No, or in, any of the Khadijs or any of the... That's a very good point you make now. This is why... I ask you this question, have you actually studied the science of Hadith? Because when you do, you come to realize that some of the reports of the Prophet uh, become so, um, how can I put it, um, so much um, multiply attested that they become impossible to be false or a lie. I'll give you an example. Let's say Aisha says something and then another companion comes along he confirms what Aisha said. But he wasn't in the room though. He wasn't in the room. So how can he confirm? Okay, about what Aisha said, okay. It's still third person, this is a problem. Right, right. Unless he was physically in the room, right. he cannot 100% say so. She, you know, the Arabic language is very complicated. It has multiple words and multiple meanings to particular words. All she has to do is to say one word wrong, or one, she's a human being, obviously she's fallible. So the science of the Hadith is very flawed. No, it's not flawed. Because from the beginning, when you use the word flawed, you, well, you you are you are sinking the ship just because uh, you see uh, no, no, you see the fault maybe oh, the way I... you see it you see the fault maybe a scratch on the body of the ship we should drown the ship no it's, it doesn't work like that the ship the vessel is still floating for the so last 14 century I'll explain the, the I'll explain how it works it. certain things Aisha said for a, you raised a very very valid point no doubt it's an intelligent point certain things because of that reason because Aisha radiallahu anha she was alone in having certain opinions and other companions of the Prophet who had heard from the Prophet complimentary information which corrected Aisha they rejected what Aisha said for example one of the views Aisha held was that uh, giving milk to a child a certain amount of times a, a certain number of times that child becomes your mahram mahram is that you no longer have to cover yourself from him he becomes your your like a son like you know foster son yeah so how do we how do we establish foster relationships with a child or with a person aisha had one view and others other companions they didn't accept it they said no sorry aisha is mistaken here. Was she has misunderstood. no of course she they said she made a mistake she had an error in judgment she, when someone makes a mistake, if Raj makes a mistake, I'm not going to say Raj is a liar. I'm not going to say that. I'm going to say Raj made a mistake, right? So we have this mechanism in Hadith sites. Okay, it's not as blind as Aisha said it. Allah, and we, you know, we bow to Aisha. Oh, wait, wait, let me finish. Let me finish very quickly. We have a system where the ch the reports of the Prophet are multiply attested. He had over a. 100,000 companions and out of those 100,000 we know 10,000 by name 10,000 of them we know them by name we know who they were where they came from what they did and how long they lived the last one to die died in 110 his name was Amir Abu Tufail okay he died in 110 exactly a century after uh, nearly 99 years after the Prophet's death when the Prophet was alive he was nearly 10 years old uh, uh, when Prophet, Prophet died and he lived for nearly 109, 110 years old. Okay, can so, I, can I ask yeah. you one question? So, so we, we know exactly when they lived, what they preached, what they taught, and amazingly, when they preached something, like Abu Bakr would say, I heard Prophet saying this, this, this. Did anyone else hear this? And one, two, 
about three, four, five people would stand well, can, up. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. All right. You see the point? All right, now, right, do you understand right, how right, our, right, our right, tradition right, is preserved? Right, yeah. All right, let me just clarify. I am not going to contest that there's three people in the room that you can claim that that source is reliable. What I'm trying to say to you, and I want a percentage from yourself that you might know, how many of the Hadiths are just from one person with Muhammad alone? How many of them are there? How many in the percentage? Is it ten percent? Because those hadiths then will be unreliable to a certain degree. No, not necessarily. Because no. unless you not have a person in the room, no. you're, you're admitting that Aisha and anybody else apart from Prophet Muhammad is fallible. Yeah. So if they're fallible, they could make tiny mistakes, are they? So if they were to do which, come out, which they did. I know, but unless which they did. Person, so you agree they did. So even yes. the ones that you can. But how do how do we know they made mistakes? How do we know they made? Because mistakes? it contradicts the Quran. No. Or no, 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 no. Well, that's what I was because saying. other companions came forward and they gave the, the remaining information. They said this is what was missing. So what we do, what we do is we have almost about five to six thousand reports from the Prophet. Uh, okay, uh, without repetition. For example, if you pick up Bukhari, which is our tradition, uh, which has changed. I'll give you an example. What do we mean by change? Bukhari, you're right, wrote in the late or the early 3rd century okay, of Islam. Bukhari was writing at that time. And you were thinking, hold on a second, Bukhari is two centuries apart from the Prophet. How can he get this information? Right? Very good point. Bukhari took this information from teachers who were taught by their teachers and they were taught by their teachers and they were taught directly by the Prophet. And this was public knowledge. People were taking this knowledge publicly, delivering it publicly. Right? For example, Bukhari had a teacher called Abdullah bin Yusuf. Abdullah bin Yusuf taught Bukhari when he was in his 80s or 90s. He was a very old man. Okay. Abdullah bin Yusuf took his knowledge from a man called Malik bin Anas. Malik bin Anas also lived a very long life. He was born in uh, 93 or 94 Hijri and died in 179. So he lived nearly 80 plus, how much is that? 80 plus, uh, 86 years old. Malik was taught by Nafir. Nafi was a teacher of Malik and Nafi was taught by Abdullah bin Umar. Abdullah bin Umar was taught directly by the Prophet. This is an uninterrupted chain. <laughs> well, let me finish, right? So, um, so that you explain. Okay. This is an uninterrupted chain of teachers who are teaching publicly, passing on the tradition. Okay. Now, this is one chain. One chain. Bukhari has hundreds, hundreds. Okay, now there are chains where Bukhari has three, three people between him and him and the Prophet. Very quickly, I'm finishing now. Yeah, Bukhari had a teacher called Maki ibn Abi Ibrahim. Okay, Maki ibn Abi Ibrahim had a teacher called Yazid ibn Abi uh, Abi Ubaid. Okay, Yazid ibn Abi Ubaid had a teacher called Salma tabn al Aqwa, who was a direct companion of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So Prophet taught Salma tabn al Aqwa. Salma Tabdi Al-Aqwa taught Yazid bin, uh, Yazid bin Abi, Abi, uh, uh, Abi Ubaid and Yazid taught his student Maki ibn Abi Ibrahim and Maki taught Bukhari. Three people between Bukhari and Prophet Muhammad and all three of them, they lived long lives, over 70 years old. So when you do the calculation, you come to realize actually historically, they did live between this period and they, if they if each one of them is 70 to 80 years old can easily teach his student and then his student and then Bukhari so historically we have carried out meticulous research into these topics we we, we have delicately delicately uh, checked every single report every single word of hadith literature has been turned upside down and you know who the first people are to cast uh, cast aside certain controversial reports, right? Because they cannot reach the level of certainty we, we require for our religion. Our own scholars, the Muslim scholars. No, I need to speak here. Okay, so if, if we apply that standard on we, the secret religion. dialogue, not on one of them. Oh, sorry, sorry. So, so, so yeah, please, all right, I'm gonna go back to the source. Yeah. You have one individual in a room with Muhammad. There is no third person. Yeah. The person that's, that Muhammad is talking to, if you believe that Muhammad is perfect, then obviously you can say what Muhammad said was perfect. But if the person he's saying it to is imperfect and then leaves the room and then speaks to somebody else and mistranslates or misrepresents what he says, and I'm gonna say I'm gonna put another thing into it so you can kind of mix it mix it up, trigger warning again. Uh, I understand that Aisha yeah, had issues with um, one of the, the, the one of the caliphs that was later on. There was a bit of kind of political intrigue Ali, within she the fought, she fought to battle with so, is there, as a person, as a, and we believe Aisha was wrong. 
as a fallible human being who yeah. might have had some distrust or hatred towards yeah. Ali, yeah. may her interpretations that Muhammad said then be kind of construed to suit her narrative? She actually did not follow the Prophet in this. Prophet had specifically warned her. So she lied? Yeah. It sounds... No, 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 no. Look. If someone makes an error of judgment, doesn't make that person a liar. How simple is that, Raj? Is that difficult to understand? Oh, if understand. you make an error of judgment, am I saying, law, Raj, you're a liar, chuta Yeah, but, in Punjabi. Had, I use the, oh, no, I use the but, Punjabi but word as well. How do you know that she, yeah. she wasn't uh, purposely lying? No. We never, we have never believed that. We will never believe that. Was Aisha she? knew because the Prophet, peace be upon him, anyone who be professed belief in Prophet, and how do we know this person professes belief in the Prophet? Someone who was very diligent in his worship. Someone who prayed five times a day and did not compromise at all on faith. We know that person was actually truly following the Prophet of Islam. Aisha was one of them. We have no reasons to doubt Aisha's character because Aisha was very diligent in her worship. So okay? why did she uh, uh, discuss the character? Shias have a completely different tradition. I'm not trying to like, no, 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 there's no call. I like the Shia brothers. Okay. No division. Okay. Uh, the Shias have a completely different view on Islamic history. Uh, that's why earlier when I said the Sikhs have uh, you know, made up stories. Oh, let's not uh, go to the Sikhs. Let's go back no, to the No, no, no. I'm, I'm giving you an example. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, this is a discussion, Raj. Yeah, yeah. So I can say what I want. Sikhs have made up stories around the deaths of the two of the Guru's sons, right? The detail how they spoke to their grandmother, how dignified they were. They, uh, they, 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 they refused. So wait, wait, wait. Come, come. They refused. They refused to bow to the Mughal pressure. They did not convert to Islam. Okay, all of these details are impossible to ascertain. They are impossible to ascertain. Why? Because we do not have any independent. Even the Sikh tradition casts doubt on these stories. There are Sikh historians who said these stories. I'm sorry. We're sorry. We can't really trust them. Adam, we, we went can't over believe. this and yeah. I said to you yeah. that I agree that the yeah. distortion can happen over history. Yeah. And that people can exaggerate so things. Just like that, the Shias. Just like that. Just like the Shias have carved so many stories around. about Aisha. Uh, no, no, about that. Uh, about yeah, Aisha. About Generally. Aisha. Okay. Now, because she see, has done a lot of narrations, and the what you need to know about that she is distrustful. Okay, what and you need, so how do we know what she said when she was alone in the room with Muhammad? When she walked out, Muhammad could have been the greatest person in the world and talked from God directly and said what we God have said. no reason. But when, when Aisha got the message, she is a human being who's fallible, and some Shias say that she's actually uh, uh, insincere and maybe even uh, dishonest. She may have walked out and then said something that Muhammad didn't say, and now that is a narration. Yeah, None that of, you nothing say, the Shias claim against the Sunnis is based Shia. upon what I'm, Aisha I'm said. I'm not talking okay. about the Shia. I'm just talking about she is a human being that had by Shias. Uh, look, by Shias Raj, you completely ignored what I said earlier. I know, but what? Uh, even if your argument was valid, for argument's sake, I like to see territory to gain territory. You know, we have this tactic. You can call it a Mughal tactic, yeah? Yeah? We, takia. We're not the, takia is not... Okay, by the way, let me clarify something about I Takia. I do love Takia, okay. it's my favorite... No. Uh, okay, Raj, can part. you now be educated on this and put this idea to rest forever, once and for all? We, the Sunnis, okay, do not believe in Takia. We don't believe in Takia. Takia, the way the Shias believe in it, for example, what is Takia? Takia is deliberately lying to hide the truth, to avoid trouble. That's what Takia, to put it in very simple terms. We the Sunnis, we do not believe it. We believe it's cowardice. We believe it's cowardice. If you study the history of our Imams, some of them were tortured for years by the kings and they didn't do Takia, okay? Okay, so Takia, Takia is something which is done under. For example, if someone uh, is about to be killed and the li life is threatened and uh, someone is asked, for example, to, to, to say something, uh, insulting to the Prophet or the Quran to Allah so that you can save your life like what what the, you know what's happening in, uh, in No, in India Hindu mobs are catching Muslim men and women and they are beating them and saying asking them to say JJ Shri Ram JJ Shri Ram yeah if you don't say you'll die so these some of these Muslim poor men you know who are surrounded by this uh, mob of wolves and, uh, and, uh, and hyenas they have to say this right to save their life this, in this case, the Quran is a verse that if you have said a, a word of kufr, a word of disbelief to save your lives, there is no harm on you so long as there is iman in your heart. Okay, wait. Now, taqiyya is when there is no threat. No one is threatening you. No one is saying anything to you. You come and lie. And, and the Shias do this. We don't. The Shia are 
are a minority sect in Islam, okay? We as Muslims believe that it is a cult. It is not part of mainstream Islam. I do Islam. like my Shia brothers though, so shout out to the Shia brothers. No, no, no. no I, I met them over look, there, they're good guys. The Shias have their own view and we have no problem. They, they have chosen to follow a particular path. We have no problem with that.